All right, so in this video, what we're gonna talk about is layout. We're gonna talk about user interfaces. And this is an incredibly important topic for you to understand as a computer scientist. And I'm gonna say this for a couple reasons. First of all, if you build something cool, but it's ugly and unusable, people aren't going to use it. Um, there's a huge amount of effort and thought that goes in to not only getting uh, a program to work, but when you build something that interacts with the user, making sure that that person can actually use it and finds it intuitive. I suspect you guys use all sorts of apps on your phone, on your computer. I suspect that there's a, probably a couple of them that you don't like because they're unintuitive and frustrating to use. Like they require a lot of clicking around or you know, they just somehow violate your expectations. I, I have a, a, a Sonos uh, sound system for my house and its app is terrible. Like I just find myself lost in it all the time and I'm just like something is wrong here and it's, it's hard to put your finger on. But there are also apps where you just use them and you feel like they just work, right? They do what you want. They allow you to interact with them in a fluid way. And a lot of that comes down to how the user interface is designed and how intuitive it is. And there's a huge amount of both art and science here that you need to at least respect, right? At least don't just think, oh, you know, web UI is no problem. That's easy. It's not, right? And, and hopefully... Um, this uh, video will give you a sense of, of how complicated it is and, and how just the very, very top of the rabbit hole that goes very, very deep. Um, some of you will get really into this and that's awesome. And you'll go on and you'll build these beautiful things for the rest of us to use. Some of you prefer to avoid it, but even those of you who are avoiding it and just want to write code that runs in the dark that no one ever sees, that's cool. But don't assume that all that UI stuff is easy. It's not, it's hard. Um, all right, so, so off we go. Let's talk about why the UI looks like it does. And the first thing we're gonna do before we, we, we go too far is we're gonna identify things about the UI that we wanna figure out um, why they are that way. So, so what does it look like, right? How would you describe this? So what I see when I look at the app is I see uh, a search bar at the top and that search bar doesn't work yet. Uh, this is something that we'll fix later on as part of MP1. Um, and then there's a list of restaurants below. And that, now that list is sorted because I've completed the first two parts of MP1. And so the list is sorted properly. Um, okay, so what I wanna talk about to, in this video, uh, we'll talk about in, in a separate video why the items in the list look a particular way. But in this video, what I'm gonna talk about is just why does this activity look a particular way? And if I open up the code in mainactivity.kt, I'm not really gonna find an answer for this, right? I'm not gonna find an answer for like, why is the search bar on top? And why does it have an icon that looks this way or whatever? I'm not gonna find some of this information. Um, there is some, there are some hints and there's some linkage that goes on and we'll talk about that. But one of the first things that we realize once we start to explore UI is very commonly, and this is around the web, it's true for Android, it's probably true for iOS as well, I'm not as familiar with iOS. When we start doing layout, we frequently break things into two pieces. There's usually code somewhere, and that code is responsible for doing things like responding to user actions. So when we get the search bar to work, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write some code in this file that's gonna respond to changes in the text that's shown by filtering the list of restaurants properly. So we'll get there. We're gonna talk about how to do that. Um, but there's usually some other type of information that's used to just put things in the right spot in the UI, sometimes known as layout or markup. Um, and so what we have here in our main activity.kt is the code, but where's the markup? Uh, where is the part where there's like a search bar component that I can look at? So to find that, we need to look in a slightly different place. So instead of our code directory, we're gonna go into this res directory. So this is resources that, that are used to render the app. And there's this, um, there's a, uh, a file here called, or a folder here called layout. And this is where we put the files that determine how various things look. And there's two files in here right now. One determines how the main activity looks. We're gonna talk about that one now. And then there's a separate one that actually determines how each item in the list looks. We'll talk about that next. So let's open this up. Now, when you open this up, you're gonna see Android Studio think for a minute. And then what's gonna happen is this, this whole like, like even more complicated piece of UI is, is suddenly, you know, talk about UI, talk about complex user interfaces, think about Android Studio, right? Like every piece of this was very carefully designed to try to improve your productivity. I don't know if it's working or not, but somebody thought about it a lot. So this tool allows you to visually design 
UIs for Android. And if you were doing a lot of Android development, particularly if you were doing, um, you know, building your own apps or working on an app and doing some of the UI components, you'd spend a lot of time using this tool. Now, I don't spend a lot of time using this tool. I do a lot more, I do a lot more web design than I do Android design. So I will admit to being fairly intimidated myself by this particular tool, right? But this is sort of designed to be kind of a drag and drop type thing where I can put different elements in here and stuff like that. Um, but I suspect I would very quickly get into trouble using this. I find it easier to actually look at the underlying file. So to do that, I go over here and I click on code. Now, as you might have guessed, you know, everything boils down to code. Like the world around us is really driven by it. The websites that you visit, they look a certain way, but they look a certain way because of a file with a certain format that contains data. And this is an example. So this is the uh, particular language that's used to, uh, to create layouts for Android Studio. The format of this file is something called XML. It's not something that we're gonna talk about in a lot of detail, um, but the idea here is that the, the code, you can think of this as code, although it doesn't really run, it really is, is used to describe something, it's declarative. Um, it shows, it tells Android how to render the display, okay? And let me, let me show you, let me show you that. Um, so let's, let's, let, let's have some fun here. Let's set the visibility of this to invisible, okay? Now, how did I know how to do that? I don't know. I mean, just remember some things from time to time. I would spend a lot of time if I was doing this, Googling, searching, looking at the documentation, finding examples that I liked. Like when I got started using, doing web design, I found a lot of uh, help online. And I also found websites that looked the way I wanted to or had certain features that I wanted and figured out how they worked and things like that. Um, so here's what I think. I think that, and I actually don't know what's gonna happen here. We're gonna try it. I think that by marking this as invisible, the search bar, so this component right here is actually what maps over to the search component. I'm pointing at my emulator, but of course it doesn't make any sense to you. Um, I think this is what renders that search component. Now, if I remove this, I think it's gonna cause a problem in my main activity.kt file because it expects there to be a search component. So I don't wanna remove it, but I am interested in seeing if I can get it to vanish. Um, so let's try it. So I'm, I'm marking it as invisible. I'm going to rerun the app and see if um, if this is uh, if if this is reflected in the UI. Essentially, what I want to do right now is I want to play around with this a little bit and just sort of convince you, hopefully, that there is a connection between this file and what's shown on the screen. Right? That these two things are related, and in fact, the file is what determines what's shown on the screen. Um, and check that out. Look at that, the search bar is gone, it's invisible. Um, okay, so that was fun, uh, if, if a little silly. Let's, let's do something else. So I'm gonna add a, uh, something here. I wanna add a text, what's called a text view. And a text view is uh, pretty much what it sounds like, which is that it's a, uh, it's a, a component that contains some text. And I can tell Android what text to put in there by setting this attribute. Now, what do these attributes mean? Everything in here has meaning, right? So essentially what this, and I'll just explain this briefly, but you could certainly find out this by Googling around a little bit. Um, this says that it should match the parent. So the width of this text view should be as wide as the parent container. The parent container here is something called a linear layout that puts items in order. And that linear layout set its uh, width to match parent, and its parent is the entire display. So the linear layout is as wide as the display, and my text view is as wide as the linear layout, which is wide as the display. A lot of times, maybe a good analog to think about when you, when you uh, start thinking about layout is like boxes inside boxes, right? So the screen is a box, my linear layout is a box, and different boxes have different rules about how things go in. So the linear layout is set up in a vertical orientation, meaning that as I add things to it, they go down, right? That's why the search bar, which is the first element in the linear layout, is at the top, and then this uh, frame layout, which is used to render the list, is below it. Um, okay, so I'm putting the text in between. I expect this text to show up. Now, I expect the search view to be visible again, but I expect the text to show up below it. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna run it. There is a faster way, I, sh I should have figured out how to do this. There's a faster way when you're just fiddling with layout to set up your emulator so that it will reload, reload the changes faster, right? When you're just uh, making changes to layout, it can be really helpful to see those changes 
on the screen really quickly. And there's a way to do that. I just haven't configured my, my, uh, my thing properly for that. Okay, so now you'll see Hello World, right? Pretty cool. So, so anyway, I mean, we're just, you know, we're, we're very, very, very much dipping our toes in the water here. And there was a lot of water uh, out there. This is like a huge, you know, layout is a huge ocean. And I think for some of you, that want to create things, that get excited by this, hopefully you will start to think a little bit about layout and get into some of that stuff. Um, this is not something that I, I'm going to admit. We don't do a very great job of teaching this. Uh, you know, we probably graduate students that could not design an app layout if their life depended on it. And I think that's a little sad because that just limits you as a software creator. You'll never be able to build something someone else can use. Right? And if you do, it's gonna be super ugly and people be like, why is there like a, why is this set up this way? You know, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, I'm sure you've visited websites that are sad and broken and, and just leave you, uh, you know, a, a little bit disappointed in terms of how things are presented, right? Um, and a little bit, but a little bit of design knowledge also goes a long way, right? Not to say that getting something really well designed isn't hard, but there are some basic principles that you can learn that will allow you to build things that are reasonably okay looking. I mean, I think like the 124 website is okay, right? I'm not saying it's like a paragon of web design, but I have other things to do, so. All right, so I'm gonna take this text view out of here and we're gonna rerun this uh, and we're gonna see that the text view is gone. One of the things I, I'm trying to do here as we go along, piece by piece, step by step, is I really wanna demystify things for you. I don't want you feeling like there's magic happening, right? There's no magic. Everything in your app that happens, happens for a reason. And there's usually a code or a configuration file or some thing in the code that we've given you that explains why that thing happens. And this is something that, you know, as a computer scientist, it's sort of an article of faith, at least for me, like there is a reason, right? Stuff just doesn't randomly happen. Like there's some piece of code that ran. Now it may take a while to figure out what that is. Please ask for us for help when you need it but there is a reason, right? Everything has a reason, everything is there for, it has a purpose, and everything, well, maybe not a purpose, but everything is there for a reason. Uh, and if it's not there, it's also not there for a reason, like something's wrong. Um, all right, last thing I wanna show you related to that is I'm gonna go back to mainactivity.kt, and you may be wondering, well, how did I know to use this, uh, this layout, right? How did I know to use this particular layout to render this particular activity, right? Is that magic? No, it's done right here. So this line of code, we're gonna talk a little bit about data binding in a minute, but this line of code is what tells, when the activity starts up, one of the things it tells Android is, hey, I wanna use this layout, right? And Android says, oh, okay. Um, and so there's a mapping between what's in this res directory and this R object that's created by, by Android. So r.layout.activity.main loads the layout from layoutactivitymain.xml. Right, so there, there is a little bit of name matching going on there. Um, but that's how the main activity tells Android, I want my screen to look a particular way. Okay, cool. So, so we're off and running with some, some introduction to, to UI. I hope for at least some of you, this starts to kind of like, you know, uh, feel exciting, right? Because this really is the place where like the, the cool things that you build meet the world around them. And there's a lot of really exciting things that happen at that interface.